Hello YouTube. Um, today I'd like to do a first of several demonstrations explaining why density I cannot explain the way that objects behave and that uh, certainly is no substitute for the explanation that we have with gravity. So I'm going to be using a foam tennis ball. You can see it's an easily compressible foam tennis ball. And I have uh, some floor here. Um, I've got a, a meter ruler on the floor. And you can see it's just resting on the floor all the way along. Yeah. And a small spirit level on top just to show that uh, the floor is uh, pretty level. If I can get that uh, lined up exactly, you can see it's pretty level, pretty close to perfectly level. Now, when I place the ball against the wall here and compress the ball as much as I'm able and release it, the ball rolls along the floor way past the one meter. Now, I'm not claiming that the floor is perfectly level for the whole duration. Uh, but you can see the distance that this ball has traveled. Let's repeat that little operation. So here's the ball against the wall. Compress and release. And the ball rolls away from the wall. I don't think I got my release very good that time but the ball rolls a considerable distance. Let's try it once more. Repeat this, repeat this several times. Okay. So I'm compressing the ball as much as I'm able, releasing as fast as I can so that I, my hand doesn't interfere, and the ball rolls away. Full uh, length of the meter ruler and considerable distance further. Probably about three meters. Try that one more time, just to show that it's highly repeatable. Okay, so I'm compressing as hard as I can, releasing as quickly as I can, and the ball rolls away. So, the density of the air next to the ball is the same as the density of the air above the ball. So now if I take the meter ruler and I stand it up, um, if the only thing that matters is the density of the ball and the density of the air, then when I compress this ball and release it, it should travel upwards the same amount that it travels along the ground. In fact, it should travel a bit further because when it's rolling on the ground, there is more resistance to uh, the ball's movement due to friction with the ground surface than they would be with the air. So let's see what happens when I compress the ball as much as I'm able, really hard, and let go. It rises up a few centimeters and then falls back down to earth. Again, compressing as much as I can, releasing, and it bounces up just a few centimetres. Now, the amount of force with which the ball is propelled upwards is it should be exactly the same as the amount of force with which it is propelled sideways. I am compressing the ball to... Um, uh, create, generate that force and then releasing the ball as quickly as I can and it only bounces a few 
short centimetres before falling back to earth. And it doesn't matter how often I do this, I can only get it to move that few centimetres before it falls back to earth. I can never get the ball to travel even a quarter of the length of the metre ruler. Now sometimes it goes higher than others and that's due to my release being better or worse. I'm lying on the floor here and trying to repeat exactly what's happening but it never gets more than just a few centimeters off the ground and yet when it's compressed against the wall and released it travels several meters so the question is why should its uh, its density bring it back down to earth its density the density of the ball is the same uh, the density of the air beside the ball is sensibly the same as the density of the air above the ball so why should the ball fall to earth so quickly um, I'm anticipating that someone will say air pressure pushes it down um, but the air pressure is also applying sideways on that ball the air pressure is exactly the same in all directions it is not only uh, downwards so although people say that uh, air is pressing down on us at 14 pounds per square inch um, in, in fact, it's pushing sideways on us at 14 pounds per square inch as well. So air pressure can't explain it. And I'd like to hear an explanation purely in terms of density for why that ball only travels with the same force, only travels upwards a few centimetres, and yet will travel several meters in a sideways direction when the same force is applied. Um, just to add one further comment to um, this video. Um, of course, gravity explains this uh, perfectly well. The ball is constantly subjected to a, um, a downward attraction towards the earth a force of gravity if you wish to use that particular phrase and so when it is a force is applied um, sideways on the ball uh, the force of gravity does nothing to impede the motion of the ball the motion of the ball is impeded only by the uh, resistance provided by the air and uh, friction between the ball and the um, floor surface. Um, however, when the ball is compressed and released so that it will travel in an upwards direction, uh, it is the, the force of gravity is constantly present. This slows and decreases the extent to which the ball will travel upwards and causes the ball to continue or to, to reverse direction, sorry, and travel back down towards the floor. Now, this is pretty obvious to most people, uh, but there's a whole bunch of flat earthers out there we like to deny that gravity, that is the attraction of objects towards the earth, 
uh, exists. <clears throat> I have uh, another demonstration uh, which is different uh, but shows exactly the same um, or demonstrates the existence of gravity and I'll be publishing that video in a day or two and my Cavendish experiments video uh, is still being um, prepared I'm still um, working on that uh, a far more difficult uh, video and demonstration to do uh, but it will be getting produced um, it will be getting published I hope uh, within the next week so thank you for watching and anyone who thinks that uh, they can explain this observation purely in terms of density uh, please uh, leave a comment below or if you'd like the chance to speak uh, and explain and present your explanation uh, just let me know and uh, and I'll give you that opportunity.